There was a lady in uh, America back in the 1800s from New York City. And in New York City in the late 1800s, it was called the Gilded Age. This is where some of the original barons and robber barons and wealthy people came out of New York City. And that's where the Rockefellers came and the Carnegies and the Morgans and some of these names, the Astors. And all these names were here. There's a name I had never heard of. The wealthiest woman in the United States and one of the wealthiest non-royalty women in the world in the 1800s, late 1800s, was a name, a lady named Hetty Green. Never heard of her. Hetty Green was so wealthy, single lady. Her husband had died when they were young, so she had two children. She was so wealthy that the city of New York used to borrow money from her. Before the whole bond market thing where cities and municipalities borrowed from large bond dealers and things like that, they would borrow money. In 1907, in the the financial crisis of 1907, and they couldn't make payroll, the city of New York went to Hetty and borrowed money. Now, what was interesting was her two children had no idea she had money. They were adults. She died in the 1920s, I think. She was so miserly with her money. Now, and she was, they called her the witch of Wall Street. This woman was well healed. She owned a lot of apartments, kind of the Donald Trump of the late 1800s. And it was interesting. She used to cook her oatmeal on the radiator in her office. Now, some of you younger ones don't know what a radiator is or a register is, but it heats up the room. She would cook her oatmeal. She was so miserly that when her son broke his leg, she took him to a public free clinic. Now, free clinics in the 1890s were not that good. Nowadays, free clinics are good. Back then, they weren't. He had to have his leg amputated. It was interesting. Then she dies, and they realize they have hundreds of millions of dollars. This lady was sitting on a king or queen's ransom and didn't do a thing about it. And I fear that you hold in your hand a king's ransom, and we don't even know it. We don't have a clue that God has given to each of us as his children an incredible inheritance. And we are boiling our little spiritual oatmeal on some little register in a corner and realizing not that we are the children of the Almighty God. And this venture we go on each Sunday morning here for the next few weeks and in our life groups each Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, is a venture to see what does it truly mean to be a child of the king.